Is there not an entire section on this subject? No, yes, I may have changed my mind in the meantime on that, so it's unfair. I may have, I may have changed my mind about Mithra, for example. Is, is, your, is your book for sale about it? Yes, sir. What have you ever asked God for forgiveness? I'm not sure I have. I just go and try and do a better job from there. I don't think so. Let me tell you, 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 let me there you go. I am your host, the Evangelical Norm. Uh, I probably should have been a little more prepared for that uh, opening than I was, but you know, this is this is what I do, and I don't always prepare real well. And yet, still here you are, listening and sticking it out with me, or the 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 choice few of you that choose to do this. Uh, Y'all deserve medals. So. Um, I literally could have done prepped a podcast that would go for hours today with everything that is going on in the news, um, impeachment trials, all this stuff. Um, honestly, I find a lot of it boring. I think it's ridiculous. Um, there's nothing that they have that they can impeach Trump on, and I don't know. I honestly don't know what this is inte- intended to distract from because it just seems like everything, we're going to talk a little bit about that at the end, but every little thing that comes up in the um, news cycle is almost there to, with the intent of, of distracting you from the last thing that came up. It's just this, this ongoing thing. Um, so... The impeachment trials, I, I don't care. They're they're not going to go anywhere. Um, it, let Ben Shapiro and Steve Dace talk about that stuff because, I mean, one, they're more informed on the legalities and, and stuff like that than I am. And you'll probably find it much more interesting to hear them talk about it. If it gets to the point where um, it seems like there may be more to come out of this rather than... Um, A helmet sticker for the Democrats who did what they promised to do or um, a fundraising point for the Republicans to go, look, this is what that, you know, if it if it gets to the point where there seems to be more substance to it than that, well, I'll I'll talk about it. But at this point, you know, it's it's no more interesting to me than I don't know. It's, it's just not that interesting to me. It's pointless. It's not going anywhere. Uh, again, I, I did get into a, a pretty good uh, Twitter argument uh, with somebody over the, the term fascist. Uh, okay, okay, here, let's talk a little bit about this because this was something I didn't plan to. We're just going to do this on the fly. So apparently some uh, female ambassador somebody who had been the ambassador to Ukraine, or some in some effect, somehow she was connected. She's testifying. Donald Trump tweets at the moment that she's testifying something about, you know, along the lines of she's a loser, whatever. You know what Donald Trump, his immature seventh grade playground insults that he puts out there. Um, he tweets this and then everybody loses their mind. This is, this is, uh, intimidating a witness. Was she looking at Twitter at the time? Did she see what the president? No, she was testifying before Congress. So she had no idea what the president was treating, tweeting as she was testifying. There's no intimidation there. There's, I mean, it's just, but this was supposedly Adam Schiff was like, this is, you know, this is a new impeachment article of impeachment right here live. And everybody was like, oh, this is what this is what this president does. There's I mean, if that is considered intimidation, then we're all going to be in trouble at some point in time with things that are are tweeted and, and so on. 
I mean, it, again, it's just ridiculous. So that that probably was the most uh, interesting part of that entire thing. But all these other things came up in, in the news cycle. So there are a few things that I want to talk about. We just tonight, we took our daughter to Disney on Ice. I was going to maybe throw a couple of pictures of that in there, but I in here, but I didn't. So we went out. You can look at my Facebook page. There's a lot of pictures. It was fun. Uh, so we went to Disney on Ice tonight. And that, uh, again, we have Disney Plus launched uh, last week, I believe. It's been out for... Two weeks now, long enough for two episodes of The Mandalorian uh, to be released. And people are like, it's my all-time favorite show. There's been two episodes, y'all. Um, yeah, I, I, if this is now off of two episodes, this has become your all-time favorite show. You don't have really high standards on picking a favorite. And you probably get, you know, three weeks from now you're going to have something else that is your absolute favorite so i'm not putting a whole lot of stock into that but the one interesting thing is apparently there is a disclaimer on disney plus for some of their older movies that they have outdated cultural depictions i'm using a bunch of memes today that i made i went meme crazy this last week uh, making memes and stuff like that and and we'll talk about why but so I'm using those as my pictures today. This was the meme. I was I'm safe from outdated cultural depictions. Uh, one, <laughs> I I had not seen anything for the first couple of weeks. All these people are posting the first show that I watched on on Disney Plus was this, and I was like, I haven't watched anything. Um, I'm not getting Disney Plus. I'm not going to pay for it. I'm not going to do it because I remember a few months back when a bunch of us signed this petition that said we would get rid of our Netflix, we would get rid of Hulu, we would not sign up for Disney+. Plus. I'm wondering how many of you people watching, you people, my, my, my people, any of you out there that came across wrong, um, signed this and yet went and subscribed to Disney+. Plus. So, full disclosure, I did get rid of my Netflix account. The Netflix account that I was paying for, I got rid of. And then I was provided a free Netflix account through my telephone provider, my cell phone provider, because of this. I now have Netflix again, but I'm not paying for it. Well, I guess I, I, I am in my cell phone bill to a point, but it's a perk that they, it was given. I'm not intentionally going to go. If, if, if T-Mobile says, yeah, we're not going to do this anymore, I will not have Netflix. All right, so I'm paying my cell phone bill. They are providing me free Netflix, and I don't watch it very often. I mean, the only thing we really watch at all on Netflix really is uh, Into the Spider-Verse, which is one of my daughter's favorite movies. So there's that. And I have seen, I have Disney Plus on my phone right now because my sister-in-law gets it free through her phone provider. Um and so it's there. It's, but I will not, because I signed this thing, I will not put my money behind any of these. Now, and, and it could be hypocritical that I, I'm still watching it. I have it. It's there. Um, you can call me a hypocrite if you want. I've, I've justified it in some way, uh, shape, or form. But I'm wondering just how many people uh, signed this and then went ahead on to uh, subscribe as well. But. All that being said, the, the whole issue of outdated cultural depictions. Um, so it goes with The Jungle Book, Dumbo, um, I can't remember, Lady and the Tramp, um, Aristocats, um, some of these older movies. And again, uh, a lot of it is, is kind of racial stuff. The, the Crows in Dumbo, um, the Siamese Cats. In Aristocats, we are Siamese, if you please, right? Remember those buck teeth Siamese cats, a tip, uh, stereotypical Asian accents singing a song. We all thought it was funny. Um, don't lie and say you didn't. Uh, Y'all walked around school singing it. I had never, I've actually never seen the entire movie Aristocats. I had never seen the entire. I, actually, I still have not seen the entire movie Dumbo. Um, Never watched Bambi all the way through. Um, 
have not seen Snow White, Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, any of the classic Disney stuff, I haven't seen it. I've never been a huge Disney fan. Um, but I understand that there are, there are issues. And the, the whole a disclaimer and all that, I mean, it's ridiculous. We know that these things, they won't even put Song of the South, which again, I haven't seen. I love the song, zippity doo -Dah. I've seen that video over and over and over and uh, I've heard the song a hundred times and it's great, you know, but we all know that they're from this time frame. There's, there's tons of, of racial uh, stereotypes and undertones in these, these movies. And we're all big boys and girls. We really should be able to watch this stuff without having to deal with disclaimers. I'm so tired of disclaimers because we're such a, we're such a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Sissified society anymore that, I mean, we're just triggered at every little thing. And so we, everybody has to put the, these disclaimers in their things. So, oh, we don't want anybody to push back against us. You know what? If, if this is the case, if you're, if you're afraid of offending people or anything like that, put a disclaimer on everything you do, stating that you give money to Planned Parenthood, that you in some way, shape or form are connected with the, the largest murderers of babies in the United States. That offends me. You know, so many of these companies give money to, to organizations like that. But I'm not complaining about that. I mean, I should. And, and that's part of the reason why the Red Petition existed and why I signed it was because Netflix was just, you know, un unashamedly supporting Planned Parenthood and what they did. And that another story in the, in the news cycle this week that they um, fining David Daleiden with uh, trespassing, apparently, and, and forcing him to pay some $800,000 to Planned Parenthood on top of all the money that they made off of baby parts. Pretty out, outrageous, if you ask me. So this was just something that I thought was, was ridiculous. The whole issue of disclaimers on every little thing. Um, also, I did watch two episodes. All I've watched on Disney Plus so far. Um, two episodes of uh, The Mandalorian, the two. It's not bad. I'm not not going to put it on as my favorite show of all time yet. Um, and I'm not really uh, enthralled with Baby Yoda either. So there's you a teaser or a spoiler or something. Go watch it. You'll enjoy it. So again... The issue with, with the Red Petition, I would just like to know that if people who signed it, uh, you know, lived up to their their uh, their decision to sign, I, I'd really be interested to know how many people signed that, but yet still went ahead and got their own subscription. Um, and maybe I'm wrong for mooching off of my sister-in-law's subscription, but we're household, so there you go. Um, so we're safe from outdated cultural depictions today. I hope you guys are safe from outdated cultural depictions as well. Um, the next meme on our list, uh, apparently, I don't know who this person is. L Golding, some singer, some performer, uh, threatened to cancel her halftime show for the Dallas halftime Thanksgiving game, the halftime show for the Thanksgiving game for the Dallas Cowboys, if Salvation Army, who apparently is, is sponsoring the, the halftime show, does not make a sizable donation to the LGBTQ community in some way, shape, or form. And again, of course, that, my first reaction is, why is America's team got... Uh, having a Brit do the halftime show on Thanksgiving. That just seems a little ironic to me, maybe. I don't know if that falls into the, the definition of ironic. It's definitely more ironic than Ray A. on your wedding day. 
um, or a free ride when you've already paid. Those aren't really ironic, but um, sorry, uh, Alanis. So yeah, L is gonna cancel her halftime show, and I'm like, you know what? Who cares? Let her cancel. By Felicia. You know what? Why is everybody? You know, it's it's the whole issue with eHarmony. There are you know a hundred gay dating sites out there, but yet they had to target eHarmony and make them change their format and put uh, same sex dating on their website and it's targeting all the different beings the, it's the targeting of the the cake makers and everything else everybody is trying to take these christian organizations um or organizations founded on christian values and force them to change i say stand up and say no I, I still don't know. I haven't heard anything. I mean, I know Salvation Army released a, a statement saying, you know, our goal is to help um, the poor and the needy and the drug addicted and so on. And they're not concerned about sexuality. But again, Salvation Army is a faith-based organization. And I'm pretty sure their, their faith statement holds to the belief in the Bible and the Bible makes it very clear that homosexuality is a sin. Um, and, and so I would hope that the Salvation Army would stand up and say, no, bye, go home, go back to Britain and we'll get, you know, Ted Nugent or some, you know, proud American to do America's team's halftime show on uh on thanksgiving and again one of the the same meme was we're america's team and it was america loves watching you lose i, I love that one um because i love watching the dallas cowboys lose um the only time you'll ever see me root for the dallas cowboys is if they're playing the raiders or the patriots um the only time you'll ever see me root for the raiders is if they're playing the patriots you will never ever see me root for the Patriots ever they always have to lose every game that's my my desire the Raiders lose every game except for when they play the Patriots the Cowboys lose every game except for when they play the Raiders or the Patriots that is the hierarchy of Norm's football uh, love and there you have it Dallas kick this lady to the curb just let her go Say bye, Felicia. Go home. You know, let her go do a a, a crying video like Jory Micah did about John MacArthur and and the and the pain of being told to go home. Go home, Ellie Gould, Goulding, whoever you are. I don't even know who you are. Can't be that famous. Can't be that great. If I well, actually, you can, and I still don't know who you are. Um, I mean, I'm not the the most up on. On the popular music, I don't know what the kids like nowadays. Um, I had only heard like four Kanye songs in my life until Jesus is King album came out. So, there you have it. L. Goulding, go home. And finally, we're going to talk about the never-ending Epstein uh, didn't kill himself memes. So, this is another one that I made uh, in my run, this is when you tell me Epstein didn't kill himself, not here. Um, another fantastic meme, if I do say so myself. But so this and this is where I want to get kind of serious in the conversation and the topic. Uh, I had some people come at me this week and ask about why is this? And actually, if if you give me just a second, I will read the exact question that was given to me. Um, do, 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 give me just a second. See, there you go. Don't you love this, uh, live broadcast stuff where last minute I decide to make a change and go another direction and do, 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 do. come on. It's gotta be here somewhere. Um, Sorry, I thought it was going to be easier to find than this. Uh, where is it? Where 
is it? Okay, there we go. So here's the question that was asked. Maybe you can set me straight. Why is this a joke? I see it everywhere. It breaks my heart that people are finding this funny. Yes, it is absolutely obvious that he didn't kill himself, but I fear we should be outraged that this is being allowed to happen, not making a mockery of it. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, as I often am. I was laughing, too, when it first happened, but then I, I was impressed. It was impressed upon me that this isn't funny. The more and more I see it, the more and more I feel like I need to say something. I feel safe saying something to you, Norm, because I know you will not attack me for saying something like this and that you can have an intelligent conversation with me and help me to understand. So, again, my response to that was, um, if I can find my actual post. And again, what I said is I can only speak for myself. These memes are a way of keeping his name in the public arena. Those responsible for his death would like nothing more than for the world to be distracted by the next crazy topic on the news, which usually happens within days. These memes are just a humorous way of showing that we will not forget. We will not move on until someone is brought to justice. So here's the deal. Um, and then there were, were comments about, you know, this being offensive to those who are uh, sexual abuse uh, survivors. Um, for what it's worth, I'm a sexual abuse survivor. I was abused by my dad. I was raped in the army. I've been abused. I, I'm a survivor. And maybe it does offend some of them. Maybe it does. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you make your decision. I'm going to justify. Uh, and maybe it is just a, a lame justification of why I continue to do this. Why I continue to think it's important that these memes continue to be made. Me, uh, you know, comedy is a way that we, we uh, an easy way to continue to bring things up, sometimes even uncomfortable things. And it can be done in a way through comedy that it can't be done in any other way. So we try to find funny ways. I, I love memes. I love to make them. I love to make people laugh about them. Um, none of mine are ever going to go absolutely viral anything like that I, I have no no delusions of of being a famous meme maker but i make some and people laugh and people like them but here's the deal this guy i mean from what the statement that was made on the the hot mic tape from from cnn or abc news or whoever it was that that buried the story for three years that this could be the most prolific pedophile of all hit all known history this dude had like this setup of sex trafficking whatever pedophilia that reached into the 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 deepest levels of government into the farthest levels of celebrity and wealthy people in this nation and obviously somebody was afraid of what was going to be said and their part in this coming out and becoming known that they had this man killed. Again, these memes aren't just a joke. Right now, the official cause of death for Jeffrey Epstein is suicide. And every rational thinking human being in the United States of America knows that's not true. Cameras go down conveniently. Guards fall asleep conveniently. Hours after a list of names connected with his pedophile ring is released and this stuff goes down and then he ends up dead with wounds and broken bones that are far more consistent with homicide than with suicide. Someone had this man killed and someone would like it to just go away. But these, and, and again, the, the humor in the memes is a way of getting people to continue to share it. I mean, if, if we just, if I came on once a week and just said in, in, in a podcast, Ep, Epstein didn't kill himself, 
it would fade into obs- it would go away, especially with stuff like, uh, you know, David Delighton being found guilty of trespassing. Those are things that come up in the news cycle. The impeachment trials, all these things that that cause us to forget what happened 10 days ago or three weeks ago or whatever. So I really honestly do think it is absolutely important that these memes keep coming up because what that says to people in government to, is we will not forget. We want justice. I mean, the fact that the man is dead probably brings a little bit of justice to those girls who were abused by this man. I can, I can, I'm sure. I mean, if I would, I would, I mean, I'm over, you know, I've been mentally, emotionally, physically, I've healed from all the sexual abuse. But if I found out today, if I somehow got, uh, noticed that the guy who raped me when I was 19 years old was found dead or killed or committed suicide or something, I would feel a little bit of closure. I, I, he never was punished for what he did to me. And I think he should be punished for what he did to me. And honestly, I think rape is a, should be rapists should be killed. Those who, who rape should be, should be put to death. And so I think that there would be a little justice if I found out that this guy had died. And I think maybe for some of the girls who were abused by this man, there is a little bit of justice, but there are, potentially hundreds if not thousands i don't know but there's a there's a potential greater pool of guilty people involved in this situation that also need to be brought to justice and that could be donald trump that could be the clintons that could be the royal family that could be any number of celebrities whose names were on the the flight list of people going to lolita island this dude's pedophile island that he had. I mean, hundreds of people, wealthy people, Wall Street, Hollywood, Washington, London, you know, all these places where these people are that could be guilty in this. We know that there were more and more people that were guilty of of molesting and abusing and exploiting these young girls than Jeff, just Epstein. And one of those, if not multiple of those people, came together and had this man killed. So, yeah, I mean, is it insensitive to make these memes and continue to put them around? I don't think so. I think humor is a, is a, a, a valid vehicle in order to keep this in the public eye and to continue to, to make it known that we won't forget and we want justice. And so to, to put the pressure on whoever needs to have the pressure put on them to understand that we know, everybody knows that Jeffrey Epstein did not kill himself. So that means you should be investigating and find out who had this man killed, find out their motive behind it. And if they were guilty of pedophilia as well as him, and that those people should be brought to, to justice as well. So I hope that brings a little bit of understanding of why I continue to put forth these, these memes, whether I can make them myself or pass on the ones that I've, I've gotten. Um, there are some that are, are in such poor taste that I will not pass them on. Uh, some I'm, I'm not a fan of foul language. So I was sent this evening a, a funny, funny video of some guys catching a fish with a thing in its mouth. And it said Ep- Jeffrey Epstein did not kill himself. Um, but there's so much language in there. I, I, I can't even bring myself to share that one. But I'll continue to make them. If I can think up a funny way to put this out there, I will. Um, and And as insensitive as of an apology as it is, if that offends you, sorry, not sorry. Um, because again, I, I don't, I, I think it's a valid vehicle. Um, and you can block me, you can mute me, you can unfriend me, whatever it is, 
but I'll, I'll continue to do this. Um, again, unless somehow I'm convicted uh, that this is somehow sinful, um, I'm going to continue to do it until somebody is brought to justice in this situation. So there's my two cents on that. Take it for what it's worth. I'm going to have a couple of, of Master Dogs episodes coming out this week, talking about some of the other things in the news cycle, specifically Kanye West at uh, Joel Osteen's church. I have not listened to the entire speech that he gave. I keep getting interrupted this and on this and that. I mean, it's only 19 minutes, but I haven't been able to listen to the whole thing yet. As soon as I've got that all down and I can formulate a rational response to it, we'll, we'll put that out on the master's dog. Um, I'm also hoping to watch the Sunday service that he did, which is about two hours on Sunday the, tonight, earlier tonight at, at Osteen's church. Um, and then there's a couple other things stemming from John MacArthur telling Beth Moore to go home that I'm going to talk about as well in a couple of Master's Dogs episodes this week. So a couple of things you have to look forward to. Um, multiple episodes of the Master's Dog coming up. I think I'm probably going to have a couple unsolicited. And still, throughout the rest of the month, we will have every single day, we will have a fifth seal episode as we count down the uh, world watch list from where we're at right now. We're just doing number 13 today. And so we've got 13 through 1 that we're going to count down and talk about our persecuted brothers and sisters around the world. So you got all that to look forward to. So thank you so much for, for being here, for listening, uh, for giving me your time and your support. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They are necessary. And until next time, Soli Deo Gloria. Mm -hmm.